This is the GAC Weekly presented by the Great American Conference. I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to be with you on this Wednesday afternoon. And we do have a special guest today as I get to introduce you to well, someone that has a big part in the GAC. Maybe you haven't seen him that much. You might have seen him in Bartlesville. You may have seen him in Enid. And chances are, if, if you're in Weatherford, you've seen him there. It's Doug Self. He's the Sports Information Director at Southwestern. Doug, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Joey. Thanks for uh, you know bringing me in to talk a little GAC spring athletics. Well, I know you're in Weatherford right now, but listen, the center of the GAC universe has been Magnolia, Arkansas of late. And one of the big things, and I guess the biggest thing right now, is the softball team, and they just continue to roll through everybody, not in the G not only in the GAC, stumble a little bit in the tournament, but after that, you get back into NCAA playoffs. And the Lady Mule Riders are there, and they made it through into the Women's College World Series once again, second time in three years. Yeah, they've been on fire this postseason. You know, like you said, they kind of got hit up there in the GAC tournament, but ever since, that team has been on fire. And I had the opportunity to watch a few of the regional and um, one of the super regional games. And, you know, that's a team right now that's ready to compete with anybody. They got some of that postseason experience back from going to the World Series two years ago. And, you know, they've got the, the leading home run hitter in D2 softball history. So I think, um, you know, I know they were given a lower seed at the World Series, but I'd like their chances up against anybody this weekend. Yeah, and, you know, you talk about the, the leading home run hitter. Brooke Goad, 90 home runs for her career now. Is that a number that's just almost too much to think about? I Yeah, I, I think it's unfathomable, you know, trying to think about 90 home runs in a four-year career and, Last I saw, I think it was 30 or 31 this year. I mean, the number continues to rise. But, you know, it's funny because I know we talked about it in Enid is when they were at the conference tournament, hardly anybody would pitch to her. And then you get to the regional, <laughs> and some people may not know the reputation, or they go in there thinking, well, my pitcher is good enough to get her out. And what does she do? She's she's won them some games in the postseason simply with, you know, with her long hits. So, you know, we'll see how that works out when you get to the – the national, you know, the World Series, are, are people going to try and pitch to her? Or are they going to go in there with the arrogance that my pitcher can get her out? And, you know, <laughs> you never know how that's going to work out for him. But so far, you know, she's gotten the better of some of some really good pitchers. You know, she really has. And that that is one of the things. Do you, do you challenge or do you just seed a base runner and possibly a run at any point in time? So that that is the question. There will be eight teams uh, that are or actually seven other teams that are going to figure this one out, try to figure out the uh, Brook Go, Go Dilemma. Meanwhile, Victoria Taylor, 31-0 and 0 in the circle. Oh, it's simply incredible. Um, you know, just over to throw that many innings and that many games in a year. And, you know, she's gotten roughed up maybe a couple of times, but always the damage seems to be minimally. And whenever anything bad seems to go wrong, they got the offense to pick her up. But, you know, these postseason games have been really low scoring, and her pitching has kept them in the games and given them the opportunity to score those runs when they needed to to continue to move on. Well, let's move on then to baseball, and the final GAC team standing was, of course, Southern Arkansas. I mentioned Magnolia, the center of the GAC universe right now. Southern Arkansas baseball team just almost made it out of the Central Regional. Lost in the opening round and then took out a number of teams going through elimination after elimination. And that's just what SAU does. They find a way to get through when their backs are against the wall. Just one game shy coming up short against Augustana after some big victories over solid teams like Central Oklahoma, Central Missouri as well. Yeah, that's for sure. And they were in a similar situation as they got themselves into an Enid where, you know, they lost the first day and then, you know, you make it difficult on yourself because that's a lot of games you have to win over a short period of time. But, you know, like you said, again, they were able to battle back each day and get timely hits. Um, you know, especially I got to watch – the first game against Augustana on Monday afternoon and you know they trailed that whole game until I think it was the seventh inning when you know Augie brought in a reliever who hadn't given up a run all year and next thing you know the Mule Riders put three on them and they have the lead and they forced the if necessary game and you know just I guess just ran out of gas at trying to win six games in three days may, might have been just a little bit too much for them. That's that's a big challenge and and I don't care what team it is that's just an an absolutely huge challenge so uh, we look ahead then and and know that next year my goodness, they bring a lot of, of, of players back. Uh, it's uh, it's quite quite interesting to think about baseball within the GAC and, of course, 
I, I want to say the emergence of Oklahoma Baptist. They haven't really emerged. It's just that they've become something, uh, the Bison, something on the scene in the GAC this in the first year to be able to compete in the postseason in NCAA Division II. I think baseball is one of those sports that the GAC has probably become the most consistent in. And, you know, the addition of Oklahoma Baptist has only made it stronger. Um, you know, that field, you know, we had six teams up in Enid, and that was a field where you saw on the first day, you know, the fifth and sixth seeded teams getting victories. And <laughs> yes. Man, it was just it was a heck of a tournament because of that. And I think the strength of the league is only getting stronger. Um, you know, and OBU's a, a big part of that. But there's also, you know, Henderson State's been to the World Series within the past few years. And Monticello's been to multiple national tournaments. Us out here at Swasu, you know, won it in 16 and got to go to the national tournament and picked up a victory. So there's multiple teams on a every year basis that are going to stay competitive and the league's only going to get stronger, I think. Speaking with Doug Self now here from Southwestern, and Doug, as a sports information director, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about a fellow sports information director, Troy Mitchell from Henderson State. He's been a fixture in the Great American Conference since its incep inception. He's been a fixture in at Henderson State for 15 years. He's been in the sports information director business since 1986, and he is retiring. We found that out today. Can you talk about what something like that means? Man, what a heck of a career. Um, you know, Troy was one of the guys, one of the first people that kind of reached out to me when I got to Southwestern five years ago. And, you know, he's always been a good friend of mine, first and foremost. Um, he's a great colleague. You know, I always enjoyed, I haven't got to make a ton of trips over to Henderson just because of the, you know, of the distance. But he's always been a good friend to just sit and chat with before games. Um, I remember when him and um, Hunter came out here a couple years ago for a basketball game and I got to go have dinner with them. And, you know, he's he's great at the job that he's done at Henderson all these years, but he's even just a better person. He's a great human, you know, a good guy to, to sit down and talk with and, you know, just kind of share some experiences, not only within the profession, but of life. And, you know, Troy's been, you know, he's a great friend to me and a lot of people in this conference, and we're definitely going to miss him, but I was glad to hear that he's still planning, you know, to be around for some games and help out as he's able to. And, you know, I look forward to keeping in touch with Troy. Well, we do want to send him – uh, our best. Uh, he's going to take care of, of himself maybe a little bit better. Uh, and, and so he, he's got uh, uh, got a lot on his plate right now. And so he's going to take care of himself, his family. And we wish him the best. Troy Mitchell retiring and that uh, made known today uh, from Henderson State and from Troy himself. So Doug, really quickly, we get a chance to wrap this time up. Spring sports are coming to an end. I know there's still a little bit more going on. We'll talk about golf and track and softball in the next GAC Weekly. But, of course, from your perspective then, as the spring sports are winding down, your sports information director, what does this mean for you? It uh, means a little bit of downtime. You know, the last couple of weeks have been kind of quiet for me outside of, you know, our shortstop Alex Pimentel has been named to three all-region teams, three first-team selections, you know, capped off today with the ABCA Rawlings team. Um, so that's that's been the thing that's kept me the busiest. But, you know, those are the stories you always like to write about, you know, people having, uh, you know, that great of a year that brings them postseason honors. But, you know, beyond that, we're kind of, you know, it's kind of settled down after the last couple weeks, you know, since we were eliminated from baseball and golf, you know, played at the regionals. So kind of starting to get rejuvenated already and ready to start, you know, thinking ahead, talking to the football coaches. What can we do this summer to – you know, to promote things and, you know, trying to make plans for, um, you know, what we're going to do in the fall and, you know, if anything's going to be done differently. So we're going to start spreading the word and start start looking ahead. Well, I look forward to getting to read your your work because it's always fantastic, Doug. And, of course, you guys have a new football coach as well in Weatherford, new men's basketball coach. You have a lot to look forward to in the upcoming athletic year. Yeah, we really do. Um, you know, Chet Poblish came in back in November and, you know, they uh, – they got after it right away. Their recruiting class is, you know, I think a very large and talented group. And, you know, the energy that they brought to this program is something that I think it really needed. And I think that will will pay off. You know, we uh, yesterday was 100 days until kickoff of the season. So the, the <laughs> countdown's at, it, it's at 99 already. And, you know, it's going to be here before we know it. So I'm looking forward to those guys getting to work. And like you said, men's basketball as well. Coach Terry Evans, um, a well-known basketball coach in the state of Oklahoma, is – headed out here to Weatherford and you know he's we're actually getting ready to to finish announcing some more of his recruiting class for the year and I think the Bulldog fans will be really excited with some of the players we got coming in to join the team. 
All right. Well, I look forward to following as well. Doug Self, the Sports Information Director at Southwestern. Doug, thank you very much for taking some time with us today on the GAC Weekly. Thanks, Joe. I really appreciate it. And I would be I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to my good buddy Daniel Gallegos and Jacob Humphrey and their staff. You know, we talked about Magnolia being the, you know, kind of the hub of the central region the last couple of weeks, and that's because their teams were good enough to host regional softball, super regional softball, and the regional for baseball. And I've got to text him a little bit. I know it was a lot of hard work went into it, but you know, they have to be pleased with the outcome. I know their baseball team didn't quite get to the World Series, but their softball team did. So I'm happy for those guys, but I just I want to I would definitely want to mention them because of all the hard work they've put in the last couple of weeks with their teams hosting regionals. No question. Absolutely no question. And I want to second that. So Daniel Gallegos, Jacob Humphrey, and all of the folks there that get the job done at Southern Arkansas and taking care of, of the sports information and so much more. I know there's a lot more that goes into that as well. It's, that's a very good point, Doug. Thanks for bringing that out. This has been the GAC Weekly. Thanks for watching today. The GAC Weekly is brought to you by the Great American Conference. To hear this and see this and more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, please visit oklomasports.net and arkansasports.net. And don't forget to follow us on YouTube. That's right. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Search Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams.